Question number seven, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Thank well, you, Mr. White is Jerry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Police and asks, does she stand by all her statements? The Honourable Judith Collins. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, and I particularly stand by my statement that New Zealand police are the finest in the world, and I'm so proud of them. Uh, supplementary. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, does she stand by her statement in 2010 that her government, quote, have continued to invest in staff and equipment that reflects international best practice, end of quote, with reference to the proposed rollout of new digital radios? The Honourable Judith Collins. Well, it was an awfully long time ago, Mr. Speaker, but I'm sure I do. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister. Why, then, if the police secure digital radio network reflects, quote, best practice, end of quote, are regions outside of the main metropolitan centres still relying on the unencrypted analogue radio network that has been monitored and listened into by criminals? Oh, Order, the Honourable Judith Collins. Mr Speaker, there's been a few developments in those, what, six years. One of them is that police now have iPhones. Um, there's cellular um, network work, uh, work that's going on with Vodafone to make sure that they are able to be um, accessed all around the country. And so there's some work going on there. Supplementary. Supplementary. Order. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. To the Minister, in response to that answer, accepting that cell phone coverage isn't still throughout rural New Zealand, why did Police Minister Anne Tolley in 2013 scrap plans to extend this secure digital radio network for police into rural and provincial New Zealand, reversing your commitment in November, you're the Minister's commitment in November 2010, that that would happen? The Honourable Judith Collins. Oh, Mr Speaker, as much as I'd like to be responsible for all the things that everyone's ever done, um, the fact is, is that I can't be held or, or uh, be responsible for what a minister's done two ministers back. What are you doing Supplementary. Supplementary question, <laughs> Ron Mark. <laughs> to the minister on behalf of her government, could you answer, tell the House how are frontline police in provincial New Zealand supposed to improve burglary resolution rates and prevent crime while criminals using cheap scanners are able to listen to their unencrypted analog radio network allowing them to plan execute plan and execute crimes and then make good their escape before the police arrive the honourable Judith Collins. Well, Mr. Speaker, I think I explained to the member that police are working with their partner Vodafone on um, actually dealing with this issue around cell phone coverage in rural New Zealand. And there's a plan that's um, operating at the moment. Point of order. I, I let it go at the time, but the minister got up and said that she wasn't responsible for previous ministers. Well, as part of their administration, frankly, there's been speaker's rulings that she is. No, no, I think, I think when you consider the question, which is why did a particular minister scrap a programme, etc., and considering the very nature of the primary question that was asked, the question that was then answered is in accordance with standing orders. Point of order. Could I have some clarification then? Are you saying then that a statement from the minister that she's not responsible for previous ministers is in fact now a change in the uh, order of this house? No, no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that when I considered the question that was asked and then the answer that was given, and particularly in light of um, speakers ruling 1913 and 1914, then the answer that was given was completely in line with standing orders. Question number eight.